Gator. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Loud Spot. I'm your host, Sebastian, right out of Oklahoma City. We got a special guest co-host tonight, Mr. Evan Chavez. What is up, dude? What's going on, buddy? Happy to be here. Yeah, I'm happy you're here, man. It's exciting. First first episode you've been on. And then Jonathan with the band Kingdom Collapse. What's going on, dude? What's up, everybody? Stoked to be here. Dude, I'm so happy you guys are on. You guys have some great music. That is just catchy riffs. I was taking out your music today, and I was like, man, these guys are dope. Then I went to your Spotify, and I was like, oh, yeah, they are actually dope. Like, they don't just sound good. <laughs> they got, they got a lot of listeners, too. Fucking A, man. So tell us a little bit about the band, when you guys started, and uh, things of that nature. Yeah, so really, this band started, and we started writing for – uh this project in like 2017 and um started playing shows in 18 and then things really uh kicked off pretty fast and then by 19 you know we had some radio stuff going and then 2020 you know i know it was a crazy year uh for the whole music industry but it was also our biggest year uh you know at radio with octane and all that and then this year it's like we're kind of using that momentum to, you know, as shows are returning, tours are returning to, to really, um, you know, seize the opportunity and, and capitalize on it and, and move forward. Um, but yeah, we started playing shows in about 18, 2018. Okay. So, uh, you guys getting on Octane, obviously you have been around for a little bit. Was there momentum build up from previous bands that led up to kind of almost immediate success and being played on Octane? Uh, no, like this band, I mean, we had to start from the very bottom, but I think there was a lot of trial and error and experiences and, and, um, you know, hard work that all of us kind of put in for years and other projects, you know, where we kind of yeah. learn, Hey, like, don't do this, do this, this works, this doesn't, you know, you cut your teeth. It was yeah, a, exactly. So it was like a, a culmination of, uh, just kind of experience and like we kind of came in starting at, at a place where we were you know less uh, naive to to certain things as like say someone in their first band would be you know what I mean and so <laughs> yeah. It, yeah yeah you were you, you really learned a lot uh, being in bands and being a musician and as you get older and continue to do bands your understanding of the music industry, I would assume completely changes and you're like, this is not what I thought being a rock star was going to be like, you actually have to work hard at it and you got to book shows and you got it. And when you're young, you me, you know, I'm not in a band anymore, but I do the podcast. So I hear a lot about it and it's, it's quite different than I, than your 16 year old mentality thinks about it. Right. You know, what's funny exactly. is I had a, a bass player in one of my bands. Like when you're talking about what you learn, what you're doing and what works and what doesn't, this guy thought it was a great idea to like every song fill his mouth full of water and spit all over the crowd. I mean, we're playing for 15 people in this dive bar and he's just dousing them with this spit. I mean, pre-COVID, so nobody is really <laughs> super, super worried Dude. about it. But it's like, yeah, come on. Evan, so are, you your, like, uh, hold on. Evan are you touching your phone a lot? No. Is that your fan? Turn your fan off. All right. Give me a second. Right. I, I'm wearing pants. Don't worry. All right, all right, all right. We'll we'll give him a moment to turn the fan off. Did you hear that noise? That tick 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 kind of. Yeah, it's like. Bop, 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 bop. Yep. Yeah. It's like a. I think it, there it goes. I think it went away. Well, I also had a fan off to the left. You didn't tell me how muggy Oklahoma was. So. <laughs> yeah, Oklahoma's muggy. It's it's still crackling for some reason, man. I hear it too. I, Okay, so I'm sorry about that. I don't know what that is. Well, <laughs> well, hold on, let's see if it goes away. Man, we're live right now, so there's no I going know. back. <laughs> we are live on Facebook. There is no going back from this. All right, let me your try fan, it again. It's, it's still your, rolling. Your, your fan's still good. on. Your, fan, your fan's still on. So I'm glad that you get newbies on the show for the first time, you know. <laughs> Because I think it, 
There, I think it's a little better. I don't know what that noise is. We're just gonna continue. I don't know. I don't know what that noise is. Um, it, the noise is still there for some reason. Evan, if you don't hear it, then it's probably on your end. I don't know what it is. It could be uh, your auxiliary cable, maybe. No, I hear it. Oh, you do hear it? There it goes. If you hold it like that, the whole entire show we should. No, it's. Yeah, unplug your cable. There it is. Okay. All right. Here we go. Uh, no, it's still there. Anyways, Jonathan, we're going to continue with the show. All right. Sorry, sorry about that, man. Sorry about that. What was it like? Okay, we'll do it live. What, what, was, what was it like the first time um, when you heard your song on Octane? What was the feeling to know that? Like, did you feel like, fuck, we're going to get all kinds of fans from it? We're going to, we're finally doing something big. Yeah, it's, it's one of those things where, like, you hear it on there and, just like the platform, like the level of platform it is and everything. It's like, first of all, it's badass. Second off, it's like you have a ton of listeners that specifically want that style of music. You know what I mean? Right. And they pay right. for the scrip- subscriptions to it. So it's like they, they're they more like diehards. They're real, like, di- you know, active fans. And um, so it's cool being able to, you know, in like two, three minutes, get that much exposure. Um, yeah. You know, to, to basically the exact demographic that our music is meant for. Like, it was awesome. You know, and like, growing up listening to Octane and everything, the kids, like, when when that happened, and still even now, like, every time I hear it, I think it was like, spun 51 times on Octane this week. Um, Shit, no, wow. hold on, no, is he coming, is he cutting out on you now, Evan? Yeah. Yeah. I, dude, I think it's your internet. It's that storm. You think it's my internet? Here, right, how, how about this? How, how, how about this? How about this? How about this? Oh, I can't leave. I'll just say you don't want to hear. Check this out. You guys talk for a second. Hold on. All right. So then I'll ask you a question I brought up earlier. So when I was in a band, like I was telling you, the one of the greatest feelings I ever had was playing a show in a tiny little dive bar in Las Vegas. Pat. My singer got a photo from the stage, and you could just see nothing but heads. It was like 300 people. But for me, yeah. that was one of the great feelings I've ever had, was seeing that crowd of people there for us. What's like that moment that you felt like, this is exactly what I want to do with my life? Yeah. Uh, honestly, I mean, we've had a lot of moments like that um, to where, I mean, from shows, to the radio thing to I mean it's almost every time we get up there now it's like it's this it's like this is reality this is right. so insane like you know like especially coming out of COVID like the first show back we played with Red in San Antonio yeah. uh, oh that would have been cool to see like hundreds of people there and like I was yeah. looking at the crowd and like every other person in that crowd and there's hundreds I saw a Keenan Collab shirt almost every other person. And I'm wow, like, oh that would have been so and, cool. And they're singing all, all these words with me. I was singing all our songs, and I'm like, holy shit, this is getting real, man. This is, And so it really pushes us. I mean, that's there's a, there's a sense of, um, you know, accomplishment, and it's rewarding, and it's awesome yeah. to see. There's also a, a pressure. That comes with that too, but I mean, I, yeah. I love it. Look, I wouldn't want to. Yeah, do you? Doing f- in a small way, like we had our regulars who would come through, and every time they they'd be wearing our shirts, kind of like you said, but I mean, on a much smaller scale, and felt like a sense of obligation. Like I, it was my job to put on a good show for them. They're the ones buying our music. They're the ones yes. paying the cover charge. Yeah. With all those fans and people that definitely like know your songs know your music there's an expectation there's a there's a pressure i mean a healthy pressure you know what i mean and and it that's where i think it really got real it's like you know in mm-hmm. early band growing up no one knows your music you could mess up you could play anything they wouldn't know but it's jazz you fuck it you'll know your song you yeah know, when people know your songs absolutely you better not 
that, you know. So I saw on your Facebook page, one of your shows, uh, you had a guy in the front row. You took a picture of him. You said, be like Romeo, catch us. Or was it Romero or Romeo? Yeah, Romeo, yeah, yeah. Yeah, catch, be like him, catch us at our show. Um, do you have those regulars where, like, you know by name, and every time they come to your show, you're like, hey, what's up, bud? Like, do you go I, out of your way to meet, to meet those people and, like, let, get oh, to yeah. know them? Yeah, like, we're being uh, completely DIY. We're infinite. Um, we're, we're, you know, self-managed, everything. So, like, all the posting, all the, the interaction and everything is, like, is us. Like, so it's not... I, I think we're very hands-on and very interactive with everybody and try to take the time to make friends and to make, you know, to cultivate our, our fan base and, right. uh, and nurture it, you know what I mean? Yep. Uh, so, I mean, there's a lot of people when I see them, it, it's on a first name basis. I'm like, oh, there's Beth. Oh, there's Joe. There's Romeo. They, you know, there's Lisa. There's Michelle. There's, you know, it's like, it's awesome. It's awesome. Shout out to, to Joe, like, Lisa. Uh, yeah. 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 So I know when I was growing up, when I was coming up, it was street teams. Like you were talking about, like you're getting to know these people by name. Those are your biggest um, evangelists for your band. They're the ones spreading the words on, like on the street level. Have you guys given thought to going back to like a street team model? Or do you think you've kind of gotten past that point? And now um, it's word of mouth via the internet, playing your shows, Octane. Or is that something you guys have still considered? Yeah, so our, our version of our street team is what we call on Facebook uh, the Kingdom Collapse Army. There's a group. Okay. Um, there's 300 members in there. And it's, oh, a lot of, it's all our, our die cards. And, like, they're the first ones to hear clips of, like, glimpses of new material. Like, or, you know, they hear everything first as far as new tour date announcements, new everything. And it's don't, it's not exclusive, like, but it's, um, it's a group to where... They're the ones that that usually get to things first, and uh, yeah, they're it's like they're literally like an army. You could set a mission, and be like, let's focus on this this week. Let's share this or blah blah blah. And like, dude, they just go to the town. I mean, it's 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 literally insane. That's cool. That's so cool. So then I know your your song Unbreakable just came out, uh, or at least the video just came out a month ago, right? Yeah. So is that um, is that part of new music coming, or do you have an, an album that's dropped or that is going to drop soon? Yeah, it's uh, it's part of the upcoming album that we're in the middle of uh, uh, recording right now. Basically, we're not completely done yet, but there's a lot of new material that's that's forming that um, we're really stoked on. We have, I can say this: we already have. I mean, so Unbreakable's doing its thing, but we already have the next single ready to go for radio. Oh, and like we have, we kind of have things in line on deck, and it's it's awesome. It's a good feeling to kind of be prepared on that. I'm gonna I'm gonna play Unbreakable right now, and while this is playing, I'm gonna play some mute buttons and see what's going on, so I can't figure it out. So here is your newest single, I think. Unbreakable came out what uh, just last month. Yeah, yeah, about just a month ago. Years. All right, let's play it right now while I try to figure out what is going on with the sound. Let's go. Feast your ear meets. <laughs> 